So good morning. This is DNA. DNA is the molecular blueprint from which all humans are made. In its complete form, it's stored as 23 pairs of chromosomes in every single cell in your body. The genes in your genome provide the schematic for the proteins that form all your major organ systems, from your skin to your stomach. We are in the midst of a genetic transformation, a transformation that is rapidly altering our understanding of how your own personal genome affects your biology. Already it has changed in the way that research, my colleagues and I conduct research, we practice medicine. Undoubtedly, it's going to change your life. The complexity of DNA reflects the complexity of the human body. At its full length, the genome is over 3 billion base pairs long. More simply, if you could read this screen of DNA sequence, You'll be reading screens like this for the next 11 and a half days. <laughs> we, in actuality, only understand very little about how the genome works. The part we understand best, the 22,000 genes represent only 1% of the entire genome's length. And even that portion, we don't understand that well, due to the complex interactions of different genes and their protein products. Nevertheless, the portion we do understand has already made a tremendous impact in people's lives, particularly in medicine. And while this may not have mattered several years ago, it matters today because the cost of genome sequencing has dropped dramatically. When the first genome was completed in 2003, it took over 10 years and $3.8 billion to finish. It was an international project. This year, we expect the genome to be done for under $1,000. That's a million-fold drop in price in under 10 years. In comparison, Moore's Law, which has driven all the technology changes you've seen around you in the last 40 years, looks very mundane. For all of you, this means that every single one of you in this room today will have the option to be genome sequenced within the next five years. What will this mean for you? Well, I think an apt comparison comes from the telecommunications industry. When the first cell phones emerged over 25 years ago, they were expensive, generic, and they did one thing, voice communication, and even that they didn't do very well. Fast forward 25 years, every single one of you carries one of these in your pockets today. It's extremely personal, it's cheap, and it performs all sorts of applications you never could have imagined 20, 20 plus years ago. What sort of applications can you imagine that your genome might support in the next 20 years? Let's start by exploring some of the usages today. Most of you will recognize this pink pendant. It represents the number one cause of cancer in women today, breast cancer. Cancer is caused by mutations in your genome. And while mutation is a normal event during DNA replication, if you have specific mutations in certain genes, it causes uncontrolled cell growth and thus cancer. If you're a woman today and you have a high incidence rate of breast cancer in your family, you will get a gene test for BRCA1. And if you have variants in this gene, you have a three to seven fold ri increased risk for breast cancer. The great thing about genetic tests is that we, we can test you before you get sick. And so if you have a family history of breast cancer and have positive variants in this gene, we can treat you prophylactically and you can live a greatly prolonged life. And if you have the same family risk factors but test negative, you can avoid unnecessary prophylactic surgery. Gene variants not only are important for diagnosis, but also in the development of new therapeutics. In this case, this patient has advanced metastatic melanoma. All those dark spots you see all over that radiograph, those are all tumors. This patient has less than a year left of life. This individual has a mutation in a gene called BRAF. And if you have this gene mutation, you form a protein product that causes uncontrolled cell growth. Well, scientists today can target this protein product and knock it out. And so if you have this gene variant today and you get this drug, most of your cancer is going to remission. Genomics not only, has not only played a role in these different diseases, but also plays a role in your individual, potential individual diagnosis and treatment. In this case, these two twins were born with cerebral palsy. 
That means they could not hit their developmental milestones. Through the valiant efforts of their mother, they were later diagnosed with a disease called dopamine-responsive dystonia, which means if you give them dopamine, they get better. However, these kids remain symptomatic. In particular, this young lady had trouble breathing and sleeping. She couldn't attend school field trips because she would have problems with her throat, const her throat constricting and she couldn't breathe. In 2010, these two kids were sequenced at our genome center. And they were found to have a gene mutation in a gene called SPR, which sits upstream of not only dopamine, but also serotonin. These two kids are now on serotonin treatment, and they're almost completely normal. She even runs track and field today. Thus far, I've talked mostly about how genetics contribute to the diagnosis of the disease. What that means is that specific genetic variants in your genome allow physicians to measure physical traits they can see. Genes are not always destiny, but for some diseases, the genetic probability is 100%, like Huntington's disease. For many other diseases, the prediction probability is much less due to the complex interaction of genes and genes and environment. Nonetheless, if we think more specifically about what the genome does and its tool as a prediction, uh, as prediction capability, we realize that this specific feature is going to drive the consumer applications to come. For example, if today you're adopted, it's very difficult for you to identify your biological parents, let alone your biological family. In the next several years, this individual can get their genome sequenced. And if other individuals in their biological family have also been sequenced and are willing to be contacted, software today makes it very easy for us to identify people who are genetically similar to you, i.e., we could find not only your parents, but your brothers, your sisters, your cousins, your uncles, your aunts, your grandparents, anyone else you want to find. The similarity software also allows you to see how similar you are to anyone else you want. Do you ever want to know how similar you are to the first Neanderthals that walked the earth? Or maybe your classmates, your best friends, your partner. Without question, genetic similarity is going to affect your love life. In this case, this man has been genome sequenced, and so his three brothers. And one day, he's going to meet and fall in love with this beautiful woman who's also been genome sequenced. Here they are. Genomic software makes it very easy for us to reconstruct their family trees, and so they can do this. And we can see all the way back to all the different parts of their family. So what will it mean to them if one day they discover they want to have, one day they want to have a family and perhaps get married, that they discover they have a recent common ancestor? More specifically, what will it mean for their relationship when they discover that they were actually third cousins? And aside from the family tree, what if genetic variants could provide you specific information about the type of traits you may have? So what if your partner had a gene variant in a gene called DRD4, which has been linked to sexual promiscuity and fidelity? <laughs> Is this the type of information you want to know? <laughs> what if you yourself had this gene variant? Are you going to want to promote this type of behavior or guard against it? And do you think putting it on Match.com is going to get you more dates? Scientists are also interested in how gene variants relate to risk-taking. So in a recent Caltech study, they found that if you had a gene mutation in a dopamine pathway, that you made better financial decisions under risk. And so does that mean when you talk to your financial advisor in the next 10 years, you're going to ask not only for their 10 years of returns, but also a copy of the genetic variation? If gene variants can predict your ability to take better decisions, do you think your bank is going to be interested in your way you take these type of risks? Do you think this is going to impact your mortgage rate along with your credit score? And for all of those in the audience who imagine themselves as future stock traders, the truth is there's already a high level interest in studying how genomic variations associate with non-medical traits and behaviors. The studies we've talked about today, many of them are controversial. And what we will find is that the predictive capabilities may be overstated, or some of them will be outright wrong. But as the amount of research increases and the data levels increase, we're going to increasingly find that the genome provides a greater amount of insight into yourselves. Throughout most of human history, there have been basically two versions of yourself. 
There is the version of who you are. This is your actions and your behaviors. There is the person that you think you are. This is your thoughts and your intentions that you ascribe to your actions and behaviors. In the near future, there will be your genomic self. For the first time in human history, every single individual will have access to available, affordable, and scalable, objective biological insight into themselves. And this genome will provide predictions about your health and may provide increasing amounts of predictions about the type of traits you may present with. It's still the early days. In the past 10 years, we've only done a few genomes. But this year, we expect over 10,000 genomes to be sequenced and several million in the next couple. There are going to be myriad ethical, privacy, and security issues to be overcome here. But without a doubt, in the coming years, you're going to be making increasing amounts of decisions around your genome and about your genome. So I urge you to get educated and prepare to embrace your genomic self. Thank you.